Hi, everybody. The, this is Barry Bakin. And uh, I hope uh, that this provides some uh, useful and practical information for you and teachers that you work with as we move into uh, this uh, rather abrupt transition to online uh, education. So um, these projects, Easy Word, Excel, and uh, PowerPoint projects for uh, language practice. Uh, this this uh, workshop is something that I've traditionally done uh, in in-person settings for people, or I, well, I've also done the workshop uh, in online settings, but it has uh, traditionally been intended for people who are doing the projects uh, with a classroom full of students in a lab or on laptops. So uh, this whole idea of uh, converting them into uh, projects that can be done online uh, is is uh, new and hopefully we'll be able to um, to work with that and get some great ideas and suggestions uh, for doing that. Uh, in any case, uh, I am uh, what's called a uh, instructional technology teacher advisor for uh, the Division of Adult and Career Education of Los Angeles Unified School District, just so you know a little bit about me. And uh, we're fortunate that we do have this uh, position in our division, uh, in which uh, one at every one of our major schools. Um, and our position is to assist teachers uh, in our schools uh, with introducing and integrating technology uh, into instruction. So uh, we are actually meant to go into classrooms uh, with teachers and help them uh, implement you know, using technology. So I, I feel real fortunate that we have that position available. Uh, and I'm also a, a subject matter expert for OTAN. And some of you may or may not have participated in some of my online uh, workshops uh, or sessions at TDLS uh, in the past. And uh, presumably because you're here, you already know a lot about OTAN, but I would like to encourage you anyway to uh, find out something new about OTAN and uh, make use of their uh, services. Okay, so uh, hopefully uh, for today, uh, by the end of this webinar, uh, you will be able to demonstrate and use uh, to pretty much uh, ESL, AB, and academic students several separate projects using Microsoft Word and PowerPoint at least. Um, I had mentioned Excel, but uh, I think because of time, uh, we'll just stick to the Word and PowerPoint projects. And, and the idea is that by doing these projects, uh, your students can uh, practice uh, vocabulary, grammar, uh, or demonstrate mastery of content, uh, but additionally, uh, perhaps pick up a few uh, skills in actually using the, the, those programs themselves. So typically, uh, the first project that I, I do with uh, students, or I suggest that teachers do, uh, is just something called the About Me Project. And uh, basically, uh, this was typically done in Word, and the idea was to uh, introduce yourself to students and the students to you. And, uh, but it also served as a sort of a sly way of uh, getting a sense of where the students were at their writing level. Uh, because we all know that uh, even if you're in a level one class or a level two class, you know, you have some students who are uh, way ahead or way behind everybody else. So it didn't really matter. Uh, you know, this worked in all the levels. Uh, and it would give me a good sense of where uh, where the students are. Uh, there were, you can see by uh, looking at the example, basically it's just a, a very simple paragraph uh, for lower levels. It can be you know much longer and more complex for uh, you know upper levels or academic students. Uh, but there were, uh, as you can see, I note that there are a few uh, extra benefits, and one of those benefits is uh, if you you know, when I got in the habit of saving all of these by semester and by year. And, uh, you know, because I would save the, their projects with their names, uh, it provided an archive for me of, of my former students. And so uh, years uh, after a student uh, was in my class, if I would bump into them or 
at school or you know out in the community uh i could always if i got the name i could always search uh for the student and find some of their work from uh you know many years before and that was also uh, quite quite nice uh you know like bump into a student in an academic high school classroom and they were in my beginning high class uh you know i i could you know let them know that i remembered them and uh the students in the class you know let them know uh, how they had progressed over the years. Uh, the other uh, benefit of this project is that it does introduce uh, students to the idea of you know, writing successive drafts. And so uh, when I would save uh, their drafts, um, I would always uh, you know, save the different versions with a number. So you can create like a little bit of a chain of progress uh, for them as, as well as for yourself. Uh, and, uh, you know, so at this level, it my only intention was to introduce students to Word, uh, and of course, if you don't, if you're not using Word, you're using another program that you know that program. Uh, it, you know, start to introduce ideas about using a keyboard uh, and saving documents, and you know, in every class, you know, some people were uh, advanced typists already, and other people were using uh, two fingers, and some people were using one finger. But uh, you know, you, and you, that's how you get to know uh, what some of your students' uh, abilities are uh, in regard to using uh, the computers. And of course, there were many who had never uh, used a computer in any way, shape, or form. And in terms of um, how much you do for them, uh, you have the option. Uh, what I used to do for this very first project was to um, create a template. And um, all they had to do at this stage, especially in the lowest levels, is just get the text onto a, a computer and save it. And I would do the rest in terms of formatting uh, and you know, the way it appeared. Because what I would do with these is I would um, print them uh, one copy, uh, the finished uh, samples, one copy would go to the student and one copy would go up on the wall. Uh, and then, uh, and I just liked the way it looked if everything was in the same font and everything was, the, you know, the same layout. Uh, now, you may be wondering about the photos. Um, it was my practice to, uh, in the classroom, to take the student photos, you know, pretty much as a group. I just line them all up along the wall and uh, put them in front of the whiteboard and take a picture. And then I would have the pictures and I would, at this point, you know, I would be doing the inserting of the images uh, and the cropping to make it all look nice. And, and that worked, especially, you know, the first time you try implementing a, um, a project like this in, in the classroom. So nowadays, uh, you may not actually have a chance to do this in a classroom for another uh, many months. So the idea would be, uh, how can we take this to an online uh, platform? And so many of you uh, may have uh, an LMS uh, that you're working with in LAUSD. We use Schoology, so this is just a sample I copied out of Schoology. Uh, most of them, I think, have some sort of profile uh, option. So uh, if you don't, uh, you know, one alternative instead of doing this as a, a Word document, uh, maybe just to have have this be their profile. So in, in this case, obviously, you would you would have to add some extra instruction. You know, how do they get a picture of themselves uh, into the profile? Uh, and then if you notice uh, in this particular LMS, there's an opportunity to write a short bio and add activities and interests. And so uh, you may you know find that to be uh, an option. Uh, perhaps you know turn it into a discussion, you know, where they would uh, post their picture and, and write the text, uh, you know, use it as a shared Google document. Uh, the main purpose of, uh, you know, today's webinar is more to show the projects and not necessarily to look at all many, many ways that you can actually deliver this uh, type of instruction online. Uh, but just, these are some of the things, uh, that I thought about. Um, so then the next part of that would be, how would you present the instruction? 
instructions for doing this uh, while you're online. And so uh, again, you all have different contexts, you all have different uh, LMSs, you all have uh, you know, different tools at your disposal as instructors or as part of an institution. Uh, some of the things that uh, came to me might be, uh, you know, you, you present it as a Zoom training uh, for, for as many students uh, that you have available so that you can uh, use Zoom uh, or any of the other uh, platforms out there to, you know, actually demonstrate. Uh, you can email out instructions. You can place the instructions on your LMS as an assignment. Uh, some of you, you know, may be quite familiar with using Remind. You can send them out. Uh, you could also email the template. Uh, and again, you know, depending on your students' capabilities, just have students uh, replace different parts with uh, their own information. Uh, you could share via Google or another uh, cloud-based option. Um, so uh, at this point, and I'm going to ask the, uh, the help of the panelists, because I'm not exactly sure how this will work out. But um, what I'd like to do is perhaps just take a few moments before we go into the projects uh, to see if any of you uh, have some uh, suggestions or uh, ideas about uh, how it may work with you in your case. And again, uh, panelists, uh, can you advise uh, the participants uh, what would be the best way for them to do that through the, the Q and A? One um, of you, feel free about to the jump chat? in. So how about the chat folks? If you can think of a way that um, like taking the About Me project, how would you get that to your students? And we've got some answers coming up. Google Classroom, that, that is an LMS or more of a, um, blended learning management system. Um, anybody else? Google Docs. So we've got a couple Googles coming. Uh, Melinda, if you don't mind for a minute. Okay, now sure. for me to see the chat, please remind me. Rem the the me. three little dots. Okay. Okay. Click on chat. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Canvas, Zoom, WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, this was our first PowerPoint slideshow. Three slides all about me. Google Classroom, Zoom. Um, I've been finding they respond better to text than email. We don't have Google Classroom set up yet. Uh, remind, uh, send template from Microsoft to remind. Remind, Google Slides, Facebook Messenger. So those are some of those. A lot of Googles, um, WhatsApp, Remind, I'm scrolling up here, um, Canvas. Okay, well, I think you all get the idea. Um, again, uh, the main purpose of this webinar, and thank you, Melinda, the, the main purpose of this webinar is more to present the projects as opposed to uh, demonstrate ways to, uh, to the students. And, and it, again, because we're all working with so many different contexts, uh, what we'll do is just uh, forge on ahead and uh, you know, get, get right to the projects, okay? Okay, so uh, another uh, project that I found always to be a, a not only a instructional but just amusing and you know a lot of fun as well for for both the teacher and the students is what I call speech balloon conversations. So this is just a sample. Uh, basically, the idea is to uh, use the the speech balloon feature of a word uh, and an image that the student finds uh, on the internet or on their computer or that they you know take by themselves of a lot of people and then uh, use the vocabulary grammar or content that they're practicing uh, as part of the conversations that they uh, that they create uh, so uh, again, this is adaptable to all levels. Uh, you know, if you're studying a, a more complex uh, grammatical structure, then you just say, you know what, in at least one of those uh, speech balloons, uh, make sure that you uh, use an example uh, or a phrase that includes that grammatical structure. And, you know, if they're just in a very low level, that, that's all it is. Uh, you know, just a, a simple 
present tense question would work or a, a, a declaration. Uh, so this is very easily adaptable. Uh, here too also, uh, finished projects make an interesting uh, classroom display or website presentation. And so you, you know, once everybody's finished their project, you can uh, post them to your website or to the images of your learning management system, however, uh, whatever uh, method there is available uh, to you. As the teacher, you could make a, a PowerPoint presentation, combine them all into a presentation and, and send that out or, or display it. Uh, and again, at this point, see if, if you've already done the first project now, maybe they've learned a few more uh, useful uh, document techniques. So, Barry, we've got uh, a couple of questions. I'm sorry to okay. interrupt. Um, That's okay. A lot of people are asking, wow, you can do this in Word. Um, are you going to be showing them how to do this bubble? Um, that was part of the plan. And so, okay. yes, I'll All show right. you a few um, student samples so you get an idea of what actual ESL students did. And then I was going to go to a live uh, Word document and, and show you how to do this. So, but thanks Thank for that. Question. Don't don't worry about interrupting me. We'll make the, we're going to make this work. Okay. So uh, again, the next slide uh, shows an actual uh, student project, and uh, which also oops, it was playing it by itself. I'm not sure if I did that or somebody else did that. In any case, uh, obviously, and again, the other thing is students quickly realize you don't have to use people. You can use other things as well, and that's okay. Uh, and what's nice is you do uh, get a little bit of a cultural uh, co uh, component by introducing the idea of the difference between uh, what somebody says uh, as a, the speech balloon and then what somebody thinks as the thought balloon. And uh, I don't know if this is universal across all cultures, but, um, you know, Thoughts appear as clouds, and uh, things that you say appear with the, you know, the the arrow, you know, the pointing to the the person speaking. Uh, so that's just a that's an actual student project. And again, you can see it doesn't have to be a complex. Uh, you know, beginning level students can do this as well. Uh, Here is one. You can read through them. Oops, let me go back uh, and see. But again. Uh, the nice thing about this, if you explain to your students that, uh, you know, that you can display what somebody says and then display what somebody is thinking, you get a lot of really interesting things about the difference between what people say and what people think. And then that becomes uh, room for discussion. Okay. And uh, some of these are just, um, you know, the pictures either most likely just, you know, taken, uh, you know, after a an internet search. I do advise students that when they're looking for pictures, they, they think of things that uh, have a group of people in them. So, because that's a little bit more interesting. Okay, uh, so if you take a look at this one, this, you know, was a really great example of uh, that idea about what people say and what people are thinking. Uh, and then, uh, typically, uh, when I do uh, projects like this, somebody always comes up with like an improvement. So I had been doing this as a single page. And one of my students brought me this and said, oh, look what I made in PowerPoint. And so what they did was they actually um, made several slides. And then, you know, the person speaking, you can see on the left side, you know, rotated uh you know on each different slide uh you probably cannot see the uh the original but the next slide slide number two says uh you know i love you and the baby so much dear and the third slide is the baby thinking my parents are looking at me i'm wondering why and then the fourth slide has the father going i wonder if it's my baby really cutting edge you know uh cultural things that you know people are thinking about and and then as uh, as you can also see this student took the extra step of using powerpoint to record 
each of those slides. And so, you know, again, I learned, you know, it, almost every project I ever did, one of my students came up with some way to improve it. Okay, so uh, let's do a walk uh, through the steps for those of you who haven't worked with speech balloons. This is uh, me with a, a group of my students. What's really nice about a picture like this is that there's lots of opportunities uh, to say something uh, or to have uh, you know, conversations. And that's me right there in the center at our school, East Valley uh, Skill Center, which is in uh, Arlita, California. And so the first step is to get the picture uh, into the uh, document. And if you notice, what I did try to do is uh, locate the picture uh, down near the bottom. And I've, I find the best way to do that is, uh, you know, once the picture, you insert the picture wherever you got it from, you know, from a file on your computer, or if they uh, pasted it from, uh, you know, like something they found on the internet, the little um, uh, layout options menu. And so I, I like to pick the one that says float on the page uh, instead of insert in line or insert with the text. I just make it float so you can move it anywhere you want to. Uh, and typically, like I have students uh, put it down near the bottom because uh, you have a lot more, you know, you can you have all the space up on top for uh, the speech balloon. So. You know, the, the big thing that may be new for a lot of people is where do you find the speech balloons? So uh, speech balloons are under insert. And again, this is for Word. You may be using a different product. Uh, insert and uh, shapes. Okay. So by going at the shapes, you get a huge menu. Now, I've used a lot of shapes already, and I've used the speech balloon. So the recently used shapes are... Uh, is right there, but for your students, they may have to go all the way down to call outs. So these are called call outs. I call them speech balloons. And basically these first four are the ones that are most used. You can have a rectangular call out, a more oval one, or the uh, thought call out. So if you just click on one of them and go to your document and you, you can draw the call out. Okay, so and for some reason, this is the default color, the dark blue. And if you just start typing, you start to um, see that it, your, whatever you're typing appears in the, uh, in the text box. But it comes in pretty small. So uh, what you want to do is you know, show your students how right away you can highlight that text and increase the size, expand it. Okay. Uh, then you can also, uh, you might want to show them how to uh, change the shape by grabbing the little arrows. Notice that the, uh, the yellow one controls your who's talking. Okay, so you can move it into the location that you want and sort of direct the, oops, that was awkward, to the person who's talking. Okay, and of course you can also, uh, you know, change the, the color of the text, but really that's the, the main idea. And you may, you may want to, you know, if it's like a conversation, you may want to, you know, just suggest perhaps if it's the first person talking, maybe put them, put their sp speech balloon a little bit higher. Let me just uh, do it again with a, a different one. So you get this, the idea. Again, just manipulating the speech balloon, typing something. Okay, changing the, the text, maybe changing the color of the balloon, the shape fill changes the color. Change the size of the, the text. 
and move it into a, a good location. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, it's insert a shape, call out, and in this case, we'll do a thought. See, and then, you know, you can describe to students and or demonstrate to students, you know, moving the shapes around so you get the whole conversation in. And Barry, we have a question. Um, sure. How did you make the picture float? Okay, so uh, if you click on the picture, uh, in my version, right away to the right, you see layout options. If you click on that, you get different types. So in line with text, all the different ones, square, tight, through, you can experiment with these, but, but I just found that where it just floats in front of the text almost always works better for me. So uh, if that's not clear enough, I can repeat that, uh, but uh, basically that's how. This uh, icon is also up at the top under the, the format. Uh, the format tab, uh, right here, wrap text. So it's also available there. Okay. Thank you, very clear. All right, so basically that's uh, the speech balloon project. Um, I always, yeah, and, and typically, I would always remind students is that somewhere on the bottom, you know, remind them to put their name, put a date, and that's just by inserting a text box. And uh, I, I'd have them, I liked it when it was down at the bottom, it doesn't have to be down at the bottom. But I always had them put student name, a, a date, and, and maybe the, the class, so the intermediate or beginning. And then, uh, you know, I wasn't shy, I always told them to put my name too. Uh, so that they would remember, you know, where they learned this. Okay, so uh, if there are any, if there aren't any further questions uh, through the chat, I'll I'll go back uh, to the original presentation, and we'll move on to the next project. Okay, so uh, the next project in our series uh, of projects uh, is called uh, Photo Grammar, and uh, what's nice about this one. It, it, there really aren't very many new skills uh, that the students have to learn. Uh, in the last one, they, they learned a little bit about inserting a photo, uh, maybe also inserting a text box, you know, when they had to uh, put their name down at the bottom. And there's really, so there's really not much more to explain about this. Uh, for students, they don't have to really learn anything new, other than this is really focused on uh, using imagery and sentences to practice a particular or more than one grammar point uh, that uh, you're working on in class. Uh, this one, uh, obviously I was working with simple compound and complex sentences. And, uh, and then on top of that, we were also working with adverbs of frequency. So basically for each photo that they insert, uh, you know, they had to write one simple sentence, one compound sentence, and then a, a complex sentence. And then I asked them somewhere to um, put in an adverb of frequently. They didn't have to do that in every sentence, but I, I did ask them to highlight the adverb of frequently. Frequency, sorry. Uh, and so, again, very, very flexible. Uh, in so many ways. This one is a Word document, but students could also do it as a PowerPoint presentation with every slide, you know, being a different image and, uh, you know, the, whatever sentences uh, that you want. And here too, again, you know, completed projects would go up on the wall uh, or you could present them, uh, you know, with, with, with whatever online method uh, you have available. And again, it's just more practice with the documents, um, saving things. Uh, you know, obviously to do this, a student uh, may have to save it on their own computer uh, and email it to you or upload it to uh, the LMS. 
uh, or work as part of a shared uh, Google document. Um, and so again, you're just reinforcing uh, techniques that they may find helpful when they move out of ESL and into academic uh, classes. So there was a big uh, effort uh, in our division and also in particular at our school uh, to uh, use the uh, ESL classes uh, as a, uh, a way to start to prepare students uh, for academic classes. And so um, even in the intermediate levels of class, we, we made a, a conscientious effort to introduce uh, techniques uh, of uh, diagramming uh, and charts and you know, other types of uh, practices for in, um, organizing thoughts uh, in preparation for writing. So uh, this one uh, I used to call uh, cluster diagrams because I think that's what they're called. And uh, basically the idea was before students write, have, have the students create uh, a simple diagram with their topic sentence and subtopics and uh, you know, have them start from there to organize their thoughts before they, were, uh, before they actually put any words on, on paper. Um, so uh, the technique is basically the same uh, as doing the, uh, doing the speech balloon. You're inserting an image uh, and then uh, what's new are the, the lines connecting the, uh, the, the circles, the clusters. But again, let me show you a few action projects. This was an ESL intermediate low class. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out why my PowerPoint keep advancing these days, but you'll have to bear with me. So there you go, you see the, uh, the main topic, you see several subtopics, and each subtopic has a color-coded uh, set of ideas of supporting ideas. And uh, when I first started doing this, um, this is how you, know, how you can get good computer skills. And so this is the actual student writing that resulted from uh, this particular cluster. So you see that at work, at school, and at home. And then there are three things you should do to get good computer skills. And you see the three things. And so that was the first, that's what I first started to request of the students. And then of course, as I said before, students think of their own improvements. Uh, so this is a, a different one, uh, how to learn English. And uh, you know what I think I did is I, I copied these possibly from a, a PowerPoint presentation that uh, had auto, that would automatically advance. And I, I, maybe I forgot to turn that off. But in any case, uh, how to learn English, you have four major topic areas. And, and the students came up with this on their own. They started to color code the sentences. So I said, oh, well, that's really smart, you know, because now it's very, very easy for both the teacher and for other students to see where the clusters uh, turn into actual sentences. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So here's another one. Uh, and, and again, what happens with, you know, a lot of projects. So there you see the work. Uh, you know, how easily adaptable it is to different levels. And this is an ESL student, not an academic student. Uh, but the idea would be, uh, you know, they bring in their own experiences. You know, I, these are things that sh she works with, that particular student, uh, either as, I forget if she was a nurse or a nurse's assistant, but uh, she obviously had a lot of knowledge about uh, this and it was, it was very personal for her. So um, let's do a walkthrough uh, with some of these ideas because uh, there are some tips for making it a little bit easier to do. So uh, I'm going to uh, get out of the PowerPoint and go to my second uh, Word document. Uh, the first thing you may notice is that uh, it may be easier at, at this point to teach your students about layout and that a uh, landscape orientation may be more suitable for this than a portrait because it allows for better placement of the, the topics and subtopics on a page. 
So that may be something that uh, you would consider. Okay, but inserting the uh, the shapes is is exactly the same as the other uh, project. It's insert a shape, but this time you instead of the the call out, you don't need the call out. It's just basic shapes. Okay, so when you insert, you you draw it on the page, and again the default is that that blue with the white, and you may want to change that. Uh, but in, in terms of uh, some ideas, it occurred to me uh, after I was doing this for a while, uh, instead of having uh, students every single time, uh, you know, create the shape, it, it occurred to me that it was a lot easier, uh, you know, once you had your main topic, and let's say your subtopic, right? So, uh, and the subtopic, of course, is words, you know, the, the topics. But if you, it occurred to me that if I wanted all of them to be the same color, so I, I started to teach students about copy and paste. Because if you um, copy and paste, then each, each new balloon already has the same color and looks similar. And I said, oh, that's really easy. So we'll do one more. See, and then it, it just became an easy matter to show students how to change the color. There you go. So you just change your, your color and you get a, a, a slightly better color. So, and again, that's another new skill, copying and pasting. Now, you may also be wondering, how is it that I got the line to so nicely uh, meet the edge of the, uh, the, the ovals? So if you recall uh, uh, from the first one, there was an example. Let me see if I can find the example. Oops, too far back. Oh, I think it was this one. I used to get a list where the lines didn't always match up, where the lines, you know, just looked a little strange. And that was okay. But uh, I did say, you know what, it really looks a lot better like this and students also appreciate it. And so the simple trick for that is when they, uh, well, I'll do the reverse. You see, you, 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 you make your first line anywhere, You just make a line, and also that's also an insert a shape, and this time you just pick a line, and you draw your line. And then you can change the color and change the width. You can make it wider, or change the color, you know, so there's a lot of variations. But uh, you just put the line anywhere, And then if you right click on the line, you can send it to the back. And boom, it's a beautiful line. Let me do that again. Right click on the line, send it to the back. And your students will really like that because you, if you don't do that, you can spend a lot of time trying to get the line to match up in the right place. But this way, if it's always if it's behind, it doesn't matter where it goes. Uh, and then again here too. So all of these skills build on the previous skills, plus add maybe something new. So now they've learned maybe copy and paste. Uh, they've learned about you know moving things forward, moving things backward. Uh, don't forget to have them insert a text box uh, with their name. So that's the. Um, the cluster balloon uh, project. Let's move back to the uh, main PowerPoint. Another project uh, is the uh, PowerPoint grammar project. So again, if you haven't done any PowerPoint yet in class, this is a nice one uh, to get started. I'm not really going to go into 
explaining that, you know, step by step on this, just uh, the basic idea. You know, if, uh, if you're the type of teacher who feels that uh, doing tense transformation is of value uh, to your students, uh, this is a really nice project for that. Uh, in, in this case, what I used to do was take pictures of my students doing things and use those uh, to make it relevant. And the, that was my classroom, but uh, you could also uh, find ready-made images uh, for them as well. Uh, but basically the idea was uh, to change something from one tense to another, and then do it as part of a PowerPoint uh, progression of slides. So uh, slide number two, for example, is just present continuous. And then uh, in slide number three, uh, if everything automatically uh, changes to uh, simple past. And, but notice that I did have them uh, change the color of the font uh, for everything that made it different in simple past. And uh, again, you know, very, um, very flexible depending on the level of your students. Uh, I, some students could record their voices uh, and record the present, you know, uh, and and dictate or, you know, uh, say the uh, the changes uh, as they were going through the slides. Uh, you know, some students could manage four or five slides. Some students could manage or pairs of slides. You know, ten or more pairs of slides. Uh, so it had a lot of value, and of course, if you hadn't been, if you hadn't used PowerPoint at all, now they're learning a little bit about putting text boxes and pictures into PowerPoint and uh, doing a presentation. This I call the Making Coffee Project. It's an introduction to uh, sequences, uh, and see now that they've had a little bit of uh, practice from the previous project with PowerPoint then they were much more able to, to do this one. So uh, what I would do with this is first I would demonstrate uh, what obviously what they needed to do, but then I would uh, provide each one with uh, this PowerPoint uh, project saved already uh, on their uh, computer or on a flash drive or uh, even a floppy disk back in the day. And um, as you notice, uh, the, the slides are not in the correct order. Um, so what their task was is to put those scrambled sequences of images uh, in order. And um, the way we get to this, uh, let me uh, take you to an, the actual uh, PowerPoint that I would use. So. Uh, you may already know that there's more than one way to view uh, the PowerPoint uh, slides. Typically, the way we work with a PowerPoint slide is, uh, or presentation is normal. So you see uh, the, the slides in some sort of order on the left, and then you see a large version uh, of the slide. So uh, the task here is to put the steps of this sequence into an order, okay? Now, the way I, it was when I first uh, opened the presentation, it was under slide sorter. So in slide sorter, uh, you see all of the images at once. And then what you can do, it's very easy to drag and drop them into any order that you want, see? Now, to do this as a class participation project, you can work with this one with the letters, okay? And call out or have students suggest uh, the letters uh, which would go first, okay? So look at this as a, a sequence of steps for somebody uh, to prepare a cup of coffee, and perhaps uh, we can call upon uh, our presenter panel to assist. Uh, perhaps uh, some people uh, either through the chat or uh, pr probably through the chat, uh, just give a shout out as to which of these uh, nine images uh, uh, do you think should go first? 
and then uh, our presenter will uh, pass the suggestion on to me and I will move the slide by letter into the correct order or into the order that's uh, dictated have, by your suggestions. They, they are already answering. Uh, C okay. seems to be it, but we have an H as well. Okay, well, let's go with C since that was the first one and then people can furiously um, debate that in the chat box, which I can't They see. are, they're, they're, they're debating now. <laughs> you can uh, give me, a, give me a, a play by play, Melinda. Uh, and then we got the C. I think they might be deciding what's coming next. So now we have F. Nope. She, H. She's thinking of having a cup of coffee. Okay. So Agreed. you want H first. C. Not, yeah, they're going. They're going H first now. H first. Is H that the first. prevailing view? Okay. But it seems to be. H needs coffee. Okay. So we're at H. All right, folks. What's next? H and then C seems to be good. Okay. Yep. Looks like we're getting a bunch of C's. H C G someone just put in. So we've got an overachiever. <laughs> so we want the G? I think we want the it looks like it. F or G, someone's saying. Okay, and, and there may be legitimate disagreements. There may not be only one correct answer. There you go. So yeah, we've got people part, going, they're waffling. That's part of FG. the discussion. FG but, or GF. Okay, well, well yeah, again, uh, with your students, you can you know, go through that argument and say why G may be before F or F. Okay, where are we now? Wait, uh, um, I. F then okay, I. So as you can see, we're, we are doing this uh, in an online fashion where we're not in the same room. So this may actually be what you may be doing with your students. Right. Someone's already answering that B is going to be last. Uh, then we have A, E, D, B. Oh, you want B last? Okay. I think we are slowing down. I think you've got them in the order that they want them. All right. Well, it makes sense to me. She's thinking about it. Presto, we are done. <laughs> we, she goes to get the materials. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, she goes to get the ingredients. She puts some coffee uh, into the coffee maker. She puts some water. Again, very legitimate to change the order. Uh, she uh, turns on the coffee maker. You see some results. Uh, pours the coffee into the cup. Then pours uh, the creamer. Uh, into the coffee and I know there are some people who may do that other ways but the coffee is already in the cup so I think legitimately D has to go before E and then uh, she finally gets her cup of coffee but um, as you can see the letters on top uh, are really helpful for this discussion uh, when you share it out the original file with your students uh, you, you may, it may not, those may not be necessary, but when you do this presentation and discussion, uh, they may want to do that. And so again, you know, that's one type of practice that you could do where you have them discuss the sequence. The next step of this project is now that you've shown them, uh, how to, uh, you know, do a sequence of events, uh, and and, they, or, I'm sorry, um, Barry, we have a ahead. question. How did you get sure. the letters on there? So, so okay, so A, B, C, D. Uh, yeah, uh, let me just, let me go back to normal. So this is just a, an inserted photo and the letter is just a text box. See, so I Thank tried you. to make it large and bold. So it was easy to view because I knew I would be presenting it online, but that's all it is. Okay, so um, to continue, uh, the next step then is, you know, students have already inserted photos now into Word, they've inserted photos into PowerPoint. All this is is just the photo that's very, very large. Uh, and they could have the words uh, instead of the letters, okay? Uh, they could actually type, you know, what's, in, what's happening here. Uh, and so they would, uh, the project was for them to 
create their own sequence of events. And so they would take pictures, they would describe the sequence, they would put them in order. And, and then, you know, some of them, again, depending on time and, you know, their own skills and the skill level uh, of the class uh, can narrate that because it is a pair of PowerPoint. And so uh, that, that, that was a really uh, nice, nice project. And um, so I, I call that the coffee step scrambled. So, cause this one is in scrambled form when, when I gave it to them. Uh, hopefully, uh, after viewing the webinar, you had a lot of ideas about using uh, Microsoft Word and PowerPoint uh, as projects that, uh, for your students that perform the dual purpose of practicing vocabulary, grammar, and content, as well as introducing uh, needed techniques uh, of using some of these common, common programs. Uh, we do have time uh, for some questions, I think, a few. Uh, if um, Melinda can continue to do uh, what she's been doing in regards to, uh, you know, make me aware of the questions. Um, I will say, and uh, perhaps uh, I may be getting out ahead of myself, but um, I will make the uh, PowerPoint uh, file, the Making Coffee Step Scramble file, available to uh, OTAN as a file. So everything will be posted on the OTAN website. Thank you. Thank you all.